One of the stories I never forgot is actually the first story that Gavin De Becker speaks of in uh, his book, Gift of Fear. It's about Kelly. We've all been in this situation where you want to be nice, you don't want to make the other person feel that you are rude, and women especially do this at our own risk. In The Gift of Fear, you start out the book talking about Kelly, mm. who came to you to talk about what she, had been, what she had done wrong when she was raped, but as you talked her through it, she realized that she already saw all the signs herself. Can we talk about Kelly? Sure. She came to me and told the story of a three-hour rape ordeal she'd had. She was coming home from shopping. She had a bag full of groceries, and she got to the door to her building, and it was unlocked. And she thought, damn, I wish my neighbors would lock the door, or the other people in the apartment building. But she was glad it was unlocked because she could just push it with her shoulder, not get out the key. This is one of those buildings where you use the intercom? Right, four floors, uh -huh. use the intercom, buzz uh -huh. lock. And she was up about three levels going to the fourth floor, and one of the grocery bags broke. And all the cans of cat food went tumbling down the stairs, and one of them she watched it turn down the second floor. And she heard a man say, got it, I'll bring it up. And right from that second, she didn't like that voice. And right from that second, she knew something was wrong. She later said to you, I didn't like oh, the yes. voice. And she knew right at that moment. But here comes this friendly looking guy up the stairs and he says, hey, come on, we've got a hungry cat up there. Let me give you a hand with that. And he goes to take her bag to help her and she doesn't let go of it. And she says, no, I don't need any help. And they're both holding onto the bag for a moment. Uh huh. And then she does let go. And in that moment, she tells him, I will trust you. That little exchange between the two of them is the decisive moment. But she's getting this intuitive signal. And ultimately he gets to the door and she says, hey, uh, you know, I'll take it from here. And he says, no, I promise. I'll just put the stuff down and go. But of course, he doesn't keep his promise. She lets him in, and he holds her at gunpoint. The rape had happened. He got up. He got dressed. He closed the window, which was open, and he said, I'll be right back. I'm going to get something to drink from the kitchen. And I she, promise. I promise. And she knew that he intended to come back and kill her. And we now know he did kill another of his victims. And as he turned and walked out of the room, he said, you stay right there. Don't you move. And she said, you know I won't move. And after the rape. She's come to me to talk about what did I do that saved my life? Because she did an extraordinary thing listening to her intuition. And the moment he turned to walk out, she got up off the bed, pulled the sheet with her, and walked right down the hall, right behind him. He could have felt her breath if she'd been breathing. He continues on to the kitchen, and as she goes out her front door, she hears him going through drawers in the kitchen, and she walks right Looking across the knives. hall. Mm -hmm. Right. And she, she said to me, I knew the door of my neighbors would be unlocked intuitively. And she was right. She turned it. It was unlocked. She went in, locked it behind them, and told them to be quiet. And that listening to fear saved her life, because that was fear that she felt. Okay. First of all, when you look at the women's faces in the audience, we were all spellbound by this story, because it is the horror that every woman fears having to experience. But it was life-changing and eye-opening for me, and I know so many millions of other women, not just because of the story and the terrifying experience that Kelly had to go through, but the lesson is that when she told him no the first time, when she said, no, it's okay, I can handle it myself, and he persisted in trying to help her, the lesson is when you say no and you mean no and the other person, regardless of whether it's in a situation where somebody wants to attack you or a situation where somebody wants you just to change your opinion, what I learned from this show is that when you say no and the other person continues to say, no, 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 let me do it or no, 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 it'll be okay, you should think immediately not how do I make it nice, how do I make it better, but immediately think, why is this person trying to control me? Because no is a complete sentence.